everyone, and welcome back to episode 2 of my prison series. We are back on Hyper Prison. Although, actually, I think the server changed IPs. It is now Cinema Cloud. Um, I don't know what happened to Hyper Prison. I logged on, it took me to like a different server, so I assume that they uh, sold the other IP, and we're now on Cinema Cloud. So, the new IP will be in the description below. Everything else has pretty much stayed the same. Um, my rank stayed the same, my items have stayed the same. Um, I don't know, they just changed IP, so it went from Hyper Prison to Cinema Cloud now, so I don't not really too big too big of a deal, you know, it's just a server name change. But anyway, welcome ladies and gentlemen to episode two of my prison series. And like I sorta of briefly touched on at the end of the last video, I'm gonna be telling you guys a little story of my little uh, three week trip over at uh, Brown University. So this story is gonna be the story of how I almost died in there. <laughs> it's gonna be the story of how I almost died. So Hopefully you all enjoy, you know, it shouldn't be too long of a story, you know, I'm going to try to keep it under 10 minutes or roughly around there. Um, but yeah, before we get started, I do want to use this voting crate key that I had left over from uh, before I left. So we're going to use this here and let's see if we can get something worthwhile. Oh my god, I just love seeing the thing just rotate here. Alright, I don't know, what do we want? Do we want money or do we want a kit? Oh, 500k, well... I'm I'm totally okay with that. What is our balance now? That's uh that's a lot of money. It's like a hundred million, maybe? Yeah, hundred million. Anyway, yeah, guys, we are gonna be like just hopping right into the uh, the story here. Again, the story of I almost died during my uh, trip up at Rhode Island. So we're gonna get started. Let's just warp to N B M N. Wait, what am I? What am I on? Let's see if we can rank up. Maybe. No, I can't rank up yet. So. I don't know, what are we, are we on, oh, like, what are we on? I think we're just on M. Yeah, we're on M. Okay, nice, nice. So, let's just mine a lot. Uh, it's been a while since episode one, so I don't know what I've shown you guys and not. But anyway, let's just, let's just go ham here. But, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. So, you guys all know, uh, oh, okay, so for like four weeks, three weeks, uh, I was at Rhode Island. So, uh, let's just establish that. We could pretty much do anything we wanted there. Uh, it was a pre-college program, so essentially we were we were taking a course. Uh, you know, we can wake up anytime during the day as long as we get to our class, and we can just. It, it's pretty much freedom. You can do whatever you want, anything you want, as long as you get back to your dorm before curfew. So every day curfew was at 11 o'clock. It was just universally known on the first day of the thing that you know we have curfew at 11 o'clock. As long as you check in with your RA uh, at before 11, you're, you're good. Like, 11 o'clock is just the, the golden time standard. Just everywhere. Golden standard. So, something special about our, my RA, actually. So, an RA is a resident advisor, for those who don't know. Uh, so, like, when you're in college, the resident advisor is, like, this person who lives on your floor. And they kind of, like, they're in charge, pretty much. They're kind of in charge, but they're still super chill. So, my RA, he established on the first day that our curfew was at 10.55. And this is important, 10.55, remember that. So instead of 11 o'clock, we are at 10.55. So it, it's just five minutes earlier than everyone else. You know, not too big of a deal, but um, my RA Alejandro was his name. He was super big on time, just really, really big on time. He was a busy guy, and so he had lots of things to do, and he just didn't want to have the hassle of us, you know, coming in late after 11 and whatnot. So 10.55. 10.55 was the curfew. And uh, I still remember this, this quote he told us. He said, Early is on time, and on time is late. And I feel like that quote is going to stick with me just everywhere. You know, it was a good life lesson to, like, discipline yourself to just show up early, you know. It's, it's a good thing to do, just to show up early to everything you're at, you know. It shows that you care and whatnot. But anyway, 10.55. So 10.55 is our curfew. We just, you know, we're like, all right, whatever, five minutes. It's all cool. Um, but the thing is, with him, 10.56 and you're late. Like, if you check in at 10.56, you're late. Even though the curfew is technically at 11.00. For him, if you check in at 10.56, you're done. Just, it's over. So, just keep that in mind. So, in like the second week. Uh, you know, second week, it was just this one night. I, I don't know what day it was, but we were kind of hungry. You know, me and my floor mates, like me and four other guys, I want to say. Four other guys, we were just really hungry. You know, we had dinner at like five or six. Wasn't the greatest of dinners either. We were just, we were just hungry. We, we needed some like sustenance <laughs> to stay alive. So... It was around 10 o'clock, you know, we had about 55-ish, 50 minutes, you know, to just grab something and come back. So we were like, we definitely have enough time. Like, if we don't come back before 10.55, we deserve to be late, you know. it's We have 
almost an hour to just grab something. And we're like, so what do we want to eat? You know, there's like a lot of food places nearby. There's like two pizza joints. There's a subway. There's like tacos. There's, you know, just grills, bars, everything. There's everything. And there was this one Johnny Rockets. Uh, it was kind of down the street. It was like right next to a Starbucks. Um, yeah, so there's a Johnny Rockets. I don't know if you guys have those where you live, but it's it's kind of fast food-ish. You know, they sell like burgers and fries and milkshakes and stuff. But it's not like McDonald's, like a drive through It's like an actual restaurant. So I don't know if you would call it fast food. But anyway, uh, we're like, let's just go get some Johnny Rockets. You know, we'll get some fries, milkshakes. Really simple. Really simple stuff, you know. So we, so we walked there. It's like a five-minute walk. You know, we walked there. Um, we sit down, we get the menu, and one of our friends decides to tell us now, after we've sat down, after we've got the menu, that this uh, particular Johnny Rockets has terrible service. Like, he's been here before with his friends, and it just has really bad service. And we're like, wait, wait what do you mean it has bad service? Like, is the food bad? Like, what, what do you mean? He's like, it just takes forever for them to serve you. <laughs> and so we sit there and we look at him like, you could have told us this earlier, like, before we came here, but... At this point, we're like, we really don't want to just walk out. It's kind of awkward, too. We really just don't want to, like, you know, go to the Starbucks or the Ben and Jerry's or whatever. We, we just want food. We're like, you know, well, it's fine. You know, the service can't be that bad, you know. So we're like, all right, you know what? It's cool. We'll just we'll just wait it out. It, it won't be that bad. So anyway, we, we sit there. We look at the menu. We chit-chat. You know, we have fun. It's been two weeks at the program, so we kind of know each other already, you know, we've been, we've lived with each other in the same, like, building for a good amount of time, so, you know, we're pretty close, I, I guess, but not close enough, you know, it's only been two weeks, so, anyway, we're talking, we're socializing, we have pretty much everything we want order picked out already, but no waiter is, like, coming to our table, <laughs> there's only two waiters at, uh, at the restaurant right now, uh, it's pretty late, so there's only two. One of them is super busy. It was a late, it was a waitress. I think she was making stuff. She was just helping out. Really productive. And this other waiter, it was a guy. He was just not doing anything, and we really didn't know why he was there in the first place. He wasn't doing anything. He was just kind of staring off into the distance, talking to his coworker, and just not helping out in any way, shape, or form. And we actually got kind of pissed out, pissed about this. You know, it's like 10, 15, 10, 20 now. You know, a good amount of time has passed. We still haven't ordered our food, and we haven't eaten it yet, and we still got to get back to the dorm in time for curfew. So we're a little bit stressed out, but we're like, you know, no, no big deal. You know, eventually someone's going to come over. So we uh, we stare at this dude, the waiter. He's not coming over. He's just kind of, I don't know, just daydreaming, night dreaming. We don't know what he's doing. Eventually, the waitress comes over. You know, she apologizes. You know, thanks for waiting and whatnot. And we're like, oh, you know, it's cool, it's cool. So... Uh, she takes her orders, uh, like five, ten minutes, five minutes later, we get our food, you know, I just ordered some fries and a milkshake, some other dudes ordered a burger and whatnot, it really just depended on how hungry you were, but anyway, we get our food, we're eating, you know, we're enjoying our lunch, our, our night snack thing, I guess, it's like 10, 25, about 10, 30 at this point, you know, we're just eating, having a good time, we pretty much already forgot about the bad service, we're like, you know, whatever, we have our food, we are happy happy a happy group of males you know we're just eating our food so we're eating we're eating we're eating and we kind of lose track of time um because the next time i pick up my phone it's 10 40 <laughs> it's it's 10 40 we have exactly 15 minutes to be back at the dorm and you know just to be back at the dorm in time for curfew so we're like i think we should be able to make it so we just kind of put down our food we're all pretty much done anyway and we just go to the counter and we Get in line and we try to get our check because we know that if we try to wait for the waiter to come over, that's going to take forever again. So we just go to the counter and we try to ask for our check. You know, we want to pay and we want to leave. So we get in line. Nothing is really happening. You know, it's like 1045 now and we're still in line. Like the service really was bad. Like honestly, out of on a scale of 10, the service was like a four. It was pretty bad. But anyway, really bad service. Uh, didn't really know what else to say. You know, just we just kind of had to deal with it. So 1045. Now we're kind of stressing out. We got 10 minutes. You know, we got to get the change and whatever. We got to walk back. Um, right, let's take a breather. Where do I sell my stuff? <laughs> Where do I sell things? Uh, hold on. We'll take a little take a little break here. You know, a commercial break. I didn't see any of the signs here. Oh, here it is. Okay, I'm blind. Okay, anyway. Back to the story. 10.45. Still in line. And at this point, we just talked to the people in front of us and we just explained that Hey, sorry, we really need to, like, be somewhere right now. Can we just please, you know, just cut you in line, if you know, if you wouldn't mind? 
thankfully the family was just super considerate. I, I guess they kind of figured we looked like we weren't adults yet. <laughs> Most of us were like 17-ish. So I don't know. We still had that kind of teenage look, but we're not exactly 18 yet. So anyway, they were really nice to let us just cut. And we just we just tell the waitress like, ma'am, we, we need to go now. It's almost 1050. We, we need to leave, <laughs> please. And so we had all already prepared our money we thought we were just gonna pay individually for the meal we ordered but she wanted us to pay like as a group you know so just a culmination of all our orders together and we're like that's no problem so we just threw all the money at her it was I think around $49 I think there was about four or five of us um, maybe it was $50 I'm not exactly sure but anyway it was about 40 or $50 we just throw all the money down I had given an extra $10 because I didn't have a $10 bill I had a $20 bill so I had to get my change back, so we were all just waiting there, and I, I kid you not, this waitress was looking at the money like she'd never seen money in her life before, I don't, I don't know if she was doing this on purpose, but she like picked up the money and just, and just stood there, she just like looked at it all confused and stuff, and we're like, ma'am, please, we, we need to go, like, please, it's like, oh, it's 10.50 now, it's already 10.50, we're like, please, ma'am, ma we need, we need to go now, like, right now and so she's like, all right all right all right just calm down just calm down and you know and so she starts to put the money in the register she does it in a really slow and confused way we're not really sure why again she could have just been trolling us for all we know just to you know mess with us but we're like seriously freaking out because we we've never been late to curfew yet in the whole week um we know it's a pretty big deal because if you're late for curfew uh, they called like the Providence police, you're, you're marked as a missing child, and it's just a big hassle, so we just don't want to have to go through that. We're like, we need to be back at the dorm, you know. It's around 10.50ish still, maybe 51, I want to say still 10.50. Finally, we get our money back, I just grab the bills, I just leave the coins there, and we book it. We're, we're out of there, like, some of our friends are already pushing the door open, it's like, come on, come on, come on, let's go. And it was just every man for himself every man for himself it did not matter that we've known each other for like a week a little bit more than a week it was just every man for himself and you know it's kind of a jerk move but you know just every man for himself one of our friends got left behind we don't know if he tripped or he like he left something but we heard him calling like wait up but we just we just left him we we just left him but anyway we're running down the street and as we're running you know we hear some of the other um like summer students laughing because they know that they have curfew at 11 and we have curfew at 10.55 so they know that you know they have a little bit extra time uh, to, you know, to get back to the dorm and stuff and we're just like running for our life it's like 10.51 10.52 we're just running and we're running and this is the part where I almost die so uh, we're running like on the left side of the street on the sidewalk and our dorms like you have to make a sharp left into like this little parking lot thing and our dorms like this tall building in the back so as we're about to make a left, I see one of my friends in front of me, like, stop abruptly. And I guess that kind of gives me the sign that, you know, there might be a car there, you know? I see him stop abruptly, and he just kind of, like, like jogs off on, like, one foot. So I'm like, oh, that's kind of odd. So as, I, as I'm still running over, I stop just in time so that this car doesn't hit me. I don't know why this car's headlights were not on. I, I don't know. I think, I'm pretty sure that's, like, against the law to not have your headlights on. But anyway... It did not have its headlights on. It was like a jet blue, dark navy blue uh, Toyota. It almost hit me. I, I swear to God, if someone was not running in front of me, I might have just been boom. That's it. I, would, I might not have seen the car. Its headlights weren't on. So I stopped like just in time. I'm like, oh, sh and then I just like, you know, just kind of walk off kind of shocked. Adrenaline is still pumping in me. We run back to the dorm. We go up the stairs or not the stairs, the elevator. We take the elevator up and... I guess this is worth noting, as we're, like, about to go into the building, we see, like, a police car outside, and we're like, oh, no. And we look at the time. We're not late yet. It's, like, 10.53. And so we're like, that shouldn't be for us, is it? We see this police car outside. We're like, uh-oh. <laughs> what? What's happening here? So we're like, whatever. We don't have time to think about it. We just run into the building, go up the elevator. And as we're going up the elevator, we, we live on the fourth floor, but we stopped at the third floor. And we're like, oh, no, 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 no. It's like 10.54 now. It's 10.54. And we're like, no, 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 no. So we open the door, and we see, like, two cops in there with a bunch of girls. The third floor was an all-girls floor. And I don't know, there were just two cops there. So we're like, 
Uh, we just closed the elevator door. You know, they were all talking. People were yelling. So we were like, just we're just going to close the elevator door and we're going to go to the fourth floor. So we make it just in time, 1054. We're like, Alejandro, we're here, we're here, we're here. Like, Aki, we, we made it in time. We like just run out of the elevator. We like trip over a couple people sitting in the halls. We're like, we're here, we're here. And then uh, he, I don't think he even really cared. He was just, he had heard about the cops on third floor. So I don't think he even even cared that we like made it on time. He was just like, are there actually cops on the like third floor? And we're like, yeah, we don't really know what happened. Um, I still don't know why there were cops there. I really don't know. But anyway, yeah, that's the uh, story of how I almost got killed. The story of how I almost died on my little vacation I'm on, I guess. Not really a vacation, but like my little summer program there. I don't know. I felt a lot of adrenaline that day. Like, I usually don't feel that much adrenaline either. It was a, it was one heck of a night. Like, the friend that we left behind, we saw him maybe an hour later, you know. After we checked in, we, like, settled in, went into our dorms, you know, our rooms, showered, did whatnot. And we saw him at, like, 12. We saw him again. And I think our RA uh, let him go, you know. Really chill RA. I guess he figured because there were cops around. That might have been why he was late. So he let him go. Super, super chill guy. And we're like, all right, so cool. We ultimately, we all made it on time, you know, and we kind of <laughs> apologized to the guy saying, sorry, we left you behind, but it was literally every man for himself. Just, I don't know. That's just how it was. But yeah, guys, that was my, one of the cooler stories of my trip there, you know, almost died. It was a great adrenaline rush. <laughs> um, saw a lot of cops, I guess, like just a couple cops, not really sure why they were there, but I don't know. It was, I thought it was a kind of cool, interesting story to share, but Hopefully you all enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure to hit that like button. If you're still enjoying this prison series, make sure to share it with your friends, share it with your mom, your pets, your grandpa, your friends, your goldfish, your pillow, your plants. Just share it. Share it with everyone. Just go ham. But yeah, I will see you guys next time. Um, you know, leave your suggestions below on you know what other stories I can tell. Um, I can try to think harder of any other interesting stories that I have from my little trip there. But thank you all for watching so so much. And I will see all of you beautiful individuals next time.